Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to do one-way ANOVA in Excel. So I've set up this little example over here and as you know from your studies in ANOVA we want to compare the three groups in this case but uh, it could be anything more than two groups, two or more actually, but it becomes very useful when it's actually three or more when you can't do a two sample t-test anymore. Okay, so here I have three groups. I have group A and here are the observations. I have 10 observations and here I have group B, 10 observations, and group C, 10 observations. So these are called a, B, and C are called groups or factors when we're talking about ANOVA. And ANOVA itself self stands for analysis of variance. So as the name implies, we want to analyze the variance of these three groups. And we want to determine whether these three groups are different from each other or if they're the same. And we measure that along the lines typically of the mean. We want to see that if we want to see if these three means have uh, are equal or whether one of them is not equal to the other two or any in, the, in other words at least one inequality okay so let's calculate some basic figures here let's get the sum in each group using the sum function and let's also get the average okay so basically these are just some descriptive statistics of our groups or factors. But we're going to use, for in this video, the analysis tool pack that you can get in the add-in section in Excel. So if you don't know how to get that uh, add-in, uh, watch my video on installing add-ins. So it's called Excel add-ins. So make sure to watch that and I'll try to link that within this video. So we go to data and over to data analysis. Now I've already installed it. Once you've installed it, you'll get this. And here you have all the analysis tools that uh, the analysis tool pack gives us. And since this is a one-way ANOVA, we're going to choose ANOVA single factor. Click OK. And the input range is actually going to just be our three groups. And you can take the header column in with that and you just have to say labels in first row if you take the labels in. In our case our labels are A, B, and C. And we're grouped by column because our groups are in columns, right? If they were going the other way, we group by rows. Okay. And then the alpha level you want to set. Typically by default it's 0.05 and but you can change that to 0 0.01, 0 0.1, whatever you need. And here you can choose the output, output range. Make sure to click in here. And I'm just going to put it on the same page so we can see this right next to our data. Click right there. And let's click OK. Now Excel will calculate all these figures for us, including the summary statistics that we just computed manually here. So you see these sums over here match up with these sums over here and there's 10 observations in each group and there's 10 observations in each group and these are the groups right and here are the averages and here are our averages right everything matches up we could even cal have calculated variance here if we like right we could just use the equals var function and you see our variance already is matching up with the variance that the solver has provided us. So here this area is just a summary as its title suggests. Okay, those things we know how to calculate. The real important stuff is the ANOVA table. Okay? And that's over here. The ANOVA table is going to give us the sum of squares, the degrees of freedom, the mean squares, and our F statistic, the P value for our test, and also the F critical value. Okay? So 
What are these? Well, between groups, sum of squares is this guy right here. So this is telling us the sum of squares between these groups. Okay? And then within groups, sum of squares is telling us the sum of squares within each group. So you've seen these formulas. So we'd get the sum of squares within each group using the formulas provided. And then we'd add those up. Roughly speaking, of course, because this is an Excel video, the, the actual computations of it and how to do this manually, I've actually, I'm actually doing a video on how to get this output by yourself using the formulas that you've learned in your statistics course. But in this video, we want to use the uh, analysis tool pack. So we're just quickly referencing what these things are, identifying those things, OK? So we have the two sum of squares, which, if you add them up, give you the total sum of squares, correct? So we have SSW, some textbooks use, right? And SS between or some groups, some books might also call this uh, between or among. I've seen among, but let's just use this terminology between B for between and W for within. Okay? If you add these up, this is equal to SST, total sum of squares, right? Total sum of squares is basically the t sum of squares if you were to treat all three of these groups as one group and you got the sum of squares, okay? Next, the degrees of freedom. Well, the degrees of freedom for each one of these guys, okay? So for between, it's number of groups, k minus 1. And since we have three groups, it's 3 minus 1. And for the sum of squares of within groups, it's the, I believe it's, k times n minus 1. So if there's three groups and there's 10 in each group minus 1, we get 3 times 9, and that's 27. Okay? And then this one, just like before, is the sum of those two degrees of freedom. Now the mean square column is simply the sum of squares column divided by the degrees of freedom. And that would give you this number. And same thing for this. It's this number divided by this number would give you the mean square. Okay? <clears throat> and then the F statistic is the mean square between to use to distinguish this mean square number over here with this mean square number over here. <clears throat> it's the mean square between, so this guy, divided by this guy, mean square within. And then you would get this guy. Okay. Now, the p-value, which is probably the most important cell in this whole output, this is basically going to tell us whether we accept our null hypothesis or not. And remember, our null hypothesis is HO is that mu A for group A equals mu B, the true mean for group B, equals mu C, the true mean for group C. And HA, the al our alternative hypothesis, is that there's at least one inequality. That's what that stands for. At least one inequality. Okay, so just think about that. That means at least one of these is different than the other ones, okay? At least. Let me just complete this. <laughs> okay? So, that's our null and our, our alternative. And of course, we have our assumptions when we do ANOVA, right? That the, uh, all the observations are coming from a normal distribution, 
um, that these three groups have equal variances, uh, in which case this one actually might be um, different than the other two, but there's other tests like the Levine's test to determine that. And uh, so, you know, you got you to gotta make sure that your assumptions are, are met, and then you can go ahead with running the ANOVA. And when you get your p-value, you can now, back to our table here, you can determine that whether you accept or reject the null hypothesis. And in this case, our p-value is not less than our the alpha of 0.05, so we accept HO. Or if you want to be very technical, we do not reject HO. Okay, that's saying almost the same thing, but this one is actually more technically correct for sticklers out there. Okay, and then the critical value, just to understand every piece of output here, is actually the value which beyond the, uh, this is the, the value on the F distribution if I could draw a little mock F distribution F distribution it starts at zero it's all positive values and it kind of looks like this it's got a right skew got a long right tail that goes on for a while and this critical number is some number which they, which Excel gives us 3.35, right? That's just from right here. Such that any number greater than this would be, would cause us to reject, okay? Any number greater than this critical number that we're given here would be a reject, would, would cause us to reject HO, okay? So this is, you could say, rejection region, right? If you've learned it that way, okay? And how does that relate to us? Well, we look at our F statistic, right? And we see where does it fall in relation to this critical. Well, our F statistic will fall well to the left of that, okay? 0.449 is well to the left of 3.35. So obviously it's not in the rejection region so we do not reject and we get the same conclusion as if as when we use the p-value so it's just two ways of making a conclusion on our null hypothesis here okay so I hope this was helpful uh, this was a one-way ANOVA and we used the analysis tool pack I didn't want to get too involved in the mathematics or the statistics of ANOVA but we did briefly go over some of the stuff some things were left out, but I think generally we got a full picture of how to do a one-way ANOVA in Excel, both application and statistical theory. So make sure to watch a video on how to uh, add the, how to install the add-in, the analysis tool pack, so that you can use that, because it doesn't install by default on uh, most Excels. And also watch the video on how to actually get all these figures that the output gave us manually if you're interested in how these figures are actually computed I'll also do a video on that okay so till next time subscribe favorite and share these videos and ma make sure you click on our sponsors ads on the right also that keeps all these videos free and all these tutorials so watch all the Excel access and PowerPoint until next time have a great day